Good morning. Good morning. For our announcements this morning, uh, happening this Saturday morning, beginning at 8 o'clock, will be our church cleanup. Uh, everyone is invited to come out and lend a hand. The more folks we have helping out, the quicker we get finished. We hope to be, uh, excuse me, hope to be finished by 12 o'clock. So that's only four hours, eight to 12. So that's not too bad. Come on out and join in. For those of you who are going to your Sunday school classrooms, if you're not already doing this, please place your offerings in the collection in the Sunday school classrooms instead of dropping it off in the plates out here at the entrances. That'll give us some help there. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, there's a new format that's being worked on for announcements. Uh, it hasn't been completed, it's still in process. Looking to come up with a way that you can hopefully submit your announcements during the week instead of waiting till Sunday morning. We're looking for a way to do that, a way for you to get those into the appropriate hands. Uh, one of two things is that when you, we come in for service, those announcements will be rolling on the TV screens. Second thing is maybe it can be done by call out like the pastor already does some announcements for us. So just be thinking on that and getting prepared for that. That'll be coming up in a few weeks. The student ministry is having a fundraiser. They're having a plate sale or gonna have a plate sale Saturday, April the 23rd from 12 until 5 p.m. And again, on Sunday, April the 24th, from 12.30 until 2 p.m. The plate will include chicken and pastry, fried chicken, green beans, and a roll. The cost will be $10. And ladies of the church, you're being asked, if you will, to donate some cakes for this plate sale. Any other announcements? Brother Eugene Scott, we got a uh, family fish, family fishing farm over okay. at Camp Grace. So uh, it's coming in Saturday. And it's from nine to three. Okay. And, uh, I know we do a lot for Camp Grace. Yeah. And uh, they got. I'm pretty sure they might be sent for church. I didn't know. If not, you can find out. Then contact me, and I'll find out more information on this week. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what we're saying is everybody you're giving continue to give. Uh, if what the offering plates are still going to be out here on Sunday morning, uh, but if you're going to a Sunday school class, continue to give in your Sunday school class. If you give online, continue to give online. If, if ever that what we're trying to do is to keep the uh, the office staff from having to collect from the offering plates at three different times during worship service or three different times during our, our time here at church. We're trying to minimize that. We're going to have some lock boxes. Um, I think, uh, in the next few, couple of weeks or a few weeks, when we get the lock boxes in, then it, it really won't matter on where you're paying because they will only have to get the uh, money from the boxes at one time uh, at the service. So we're just trying to eliminate some um, back and forth with the office staff. Anyone else? Brother Eugene, um, as we're preparing for our puppet ministry performance on April 24th, um, one of our songs, we have an idea in mind, but we do require some help with it. Um, so anybody in any part of the church, if you are willing to meet with me and share with me a little bit about a testimony, um, maybe something, you know, you've come through um, with the help of the Lord, what have you, if you will be willing to meet with me after church and kind of share that with me, we're going to use it in um, one of our songs during our performance. Okay. Where can they meet with you, Miss Tracy? Um, Where will you be? Okay, all right. Anyone else? Thank you. Is Miss Pat?
Allen and the others, if you'll come forward and stand.
Um, Halana and Maddie will no longer be eligible to compete in the children's drill. They will advance to the youth drill, which they have eight seconds to respond to any call given, whereas they had 10 seconds for children. Next year, we're, we're hoping that Caden, Harper, and Brother Jamie, and Brother Jerry, your sons on Wednesday night, they expressed an interest in participating in Bible drill next year. So please encourage them to, <laughs> encourage them to, 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 to get ready, get that mindset ready to, to, learn, to learn this stuff. So thank you all, and thank you, my children. These are my children. And for a treat, we went and got some really good ice cream yesterday after the competition. So Good morning. Good morning. I talked to Marcus uh, yesterday and, and, and make sure everything, I knew you weren't going to be here today, so I talked to him, make sure everything's good to go with the sound. Come in this morning, didn't have no sound, and I panicked. And I know Rich Ed. Uh, called Jared, and I asked him where he was, so he can hurry up and get here and hit me out. Me and Brother Phillips was, was, was wide open back there trying to figure it out, but I finally got in touch with Marcus, and he, it's a little simple thing that, uh, that, uh, that the current knocked off, and he knew how to go back and do it, so uh, thank God for Marcus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Worship with us today as we sing, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me.
that chorus one more time. Welcome to Reedy Branch. Welcome Reed Branch family. And those that are not Reed Branch family, we'd like to invite you back to visit with us. We've already had a blessing this morning. I tell you, if you if you can't see good coming out of youth coming up that are participating and learning God's word and can't and listen to this music and listening to the words of this music. Lord, have mercy, we are blessed. And thank you for the workers that, that help us get there. So, uh, but before I get into call to worship this morning, I was asked to uh, make an announcement. And uh, it's kind of like a praise report for all of us. It's not Larry's praise report, it's Reedy Branch's praise report. But I um, wanted to let you know that even during this pandemic, our finances have remained solid. Um, we, you have stepped up, you were blessed, and you continued to bless this church. And we paid off our debt, so we have no debt. <laughs> Which, which is a blessing because when you go through times like we've gone through the last couple of years, you have concerns of whether you can pay the light bill and, uh, and the other things. But uh, to do that and to continue, thank y'all for not giving up and thank you for con believing in this church. Praise and how many of you have faith this morning? Oh, yes. I hope, we hope a lot of us do. If you don't have faith, you, you need to find it. Uh, Hebrews 11, 1 and 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world... <laughs> were framed by the words of God Amen. so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We, we've got to trust in, in our everlasting word and our God, but we've got to have faith. And when, when we conduct ourselves to where we can show others that we have faith, we ha we've We've met the first challenge. Amen. But uh, I trust that all of us, if, if we don't have faith, that we will find it. Because if you look around and see all the things that's going on in this country, in this world, you know, you, you better be prepared. Amen. So uh, at this time, we'd like to find out if we have any prayer requests. Before we go into prayer. Brother Larry, I, I just want to do a prayer report to myself this morning. And I'll tell you just a little something I was going to tell the preacher, but I'll let more or less won't come from a horse's mouth. 
I was took off my medication this, this week, but I've been taking for a year. So I got take for more. Amen. I want Kevin to come up this morning. Yes. Me. <laughs> my heart was about to jump on him. My, my chest. Miss Janice is talking to him up here. Come on up here. <laughs> uh, it's been a year. Going on more than a year, so and um, <laughs> <laughs> he's been able to play ball. So he's missed two seasons of ball. He said three. Three seasons. <laughs> but uh, everything that he has done so far didn't work. He's had cleaned up brick on his bone, and they just put it back straight. But right now, as he says, or just to the side. So he's got to go Wednesday to Charlotte. Thank God for setting up here. So they're supposed to be doing the surgery Wednesday. He's supposed to be home Thursday from the surgery. And the specialist says Monday he should be standing up where he can be able to walk. Amen. We want to anoint him for it. Through our faith. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Because at the Bible drill, we participate in this Bible drill. I can tell at my hurry when they have lined up, he were to stand up. But they brought him a chair. Every man and woman's got a pride. Even little children's got a pride. Go ahead, bro. I want to have a pride back. Come on, that food. We got a prayer church. So they don't go on for God. So that's my prayer. Maybe some more. Any other prayer requests before we have our prayer? Brother Larry, pray. Keep our mother in your prayer. I want to keep my family in prayer that they marks uh, four years that Gary passed in a uh, mm -hmm. tough time. Remember my family. We're going to be in this prayer. I have a special prayer request. I'd like to hear it. Happy nephew. He's not, since he graduated, he's had some issues with blood pressure. I'm just saying that. And said it's affecting his kidneys, and I pray he's going to have to have some kind of surgery uh, next month. But I'm praying for his surgery, but I'm praying for his family because there's nobody in his family safe. <laughs> so, you know, it's sad to know when the father, he was raised up in a Christian home, then he never attends church. And it's just like when we, and I'm talking to my nephew about church, <coughs> he seems like he's not concerned because he, he's never had to go to church. He's never. But I just pray for that surgery that works it so that he'll be able to have some kind of life that night. <coughs> that's like I'd like to be remembered in this prayer also. I have a rotor cuff that's torn and it is so painful. They've already tried several injections. They need to do an MRI, a plastic focus. I can't do that. They tried it with my heart bottles out. I don't know why I'm gonna do it, but it's so bad until it feels like it's out of the joint and scrubs and pops. So much pain your memories. Amen. Well, I'm the church from my family and remember my grandchildren's uh, grandma daughter, she had a knee surgery and she's not doing it at all. She did something text this morning. She just was so, so much pain. But she wanted me to ask her for it. She had a great church here. We we always uh, having prayer requests. Uh, I got a call from my cousin, Faye Colleen Lockley. Some of you may know her, Corky. Her husband just came out of the hospital this week. Keep them in your prayer. It's colon cancer, and they they hadn't got the uh, biopsy results, but keep that family in your prayer. Even though they're in Florida, they're asking for prayer here. Audrey and her family, they're still having a rough time. 
And any others if Our most oh, gracious God, Heavenly God. Father, Lord, we come to you today with thankful hearts, Lord, but also heavy hearts. We know, Lord, that you are the healer, and you can take care of all our needs, Lord. You can comfort us, you can guide us, you can lead us. And dear Father, as we come today with all these burdened hearts, Lord, and these heavy burdens, carry them, Lord. You can take them. You can... And you can, and if they have faith, Lord, you can, you can give them that hope. And Lord, as we go into our service today, Lord, we ask that you will be with us, continue to be with us. You've already been with us this morning, Lord. You've already filled our hearts with joy. You've already given us a life, Lord, to where we can see the, the fruits of what our works are. And dear Lord, we... We need comfort. We need your grace. We need your guidance. And Lord, we ask that you will look at all the things, Lord, that's going on in our world and our country, Lord. Try to give us peace, Lord, a peace of mind. And try to give people the, with, in leadership positions, Lord, some wisdom and guidance from your word. And dear Father, as we go into our work week, Lord, we ask that you will lead, guide, and direct us. But most of all, God, we know today that when we ask for prayer, that, that 
we know that prayer works. Yes. We're all, we all are fruits of that, Lord. And if, and if you don't think you've had a prayer, you may not have asked for it, but someone's asked for a prayer for you, Lord. And, and it works. It works. In all these things, Lord, we ask in thy holy name. Amen. Shepherd of my family. tell you about my Jesus. Worship with us. Jesus. 
Praise him, darling. Praise him. Spirit of God, isn't it? And there's some people in this area of Fairmont. <laughs> you know, when I first come here, the, our church was talked about. I've come to find out over the years, they just haven't been here. <laughs> the Spirit of God is here. He's here. I know He's here because I'm here and he, He's with me always. Aren't you glad he's with you always? Amen. But it is so good when we can just feel his presence. Oh, what a wonderful day we've had so far. God is good. He's holy. He is holy and he is still on his throne. Amen. You know, I know he's still on his throne because the service up to this point, it just goes along with the message today. I didn't tell the deacons in our meeting yesterday what we were preaching on, but Brother Larry's devotion just goes right along with the message. If you're turning your Bibles to chapter 13 of the book of John, we'll be in 13 today. If nothing happens, the Lord doesn't come and doesn't change directions, we'll be in John 13 next week. Today we're going to read for our attention. We'll be we'll cover other verses, but for our reading, we're going to look in verses six and seven of John thirteen today. And uh, it is good to see each one of you here. It is good to see you here. Um, while you're turning there, you know, left on a sinking ship, where the ca- a captain. A captain, a captain of the ship, and three sailors. They're here on a sinking ship. The captain speaks and he shares. He said, men, this business about the captain going down with with his ship, it's just nonsense. There's a three-man lifeboat on board this ship. We're going to deploy that lifeboat and I'm going to be on it. Now, whether you get on it or not, it's up to you. It depends on if you can answer some questions. So he looks at the first sailor and he says, can you tell me what ship went down when it hit an iceberg? That sailor said, yeah, that was the Titanic. He said, good, you're on the lifeboat with me got to the next sailor and he asked him he said do you know how many people died on that ship he said yes 1517 sir he said yes you're on that boat with us unless he can answer this question he turned to the third sailor and he asked him now name them all (laughs) <laughs> we know who was left off that lifeboat, don't we? <laughs> you know, that is, it's a bit funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it made me think about several years ago, I think it was in my second year here. Maybe my second year. Some of you know this story, some of you don't. My second year here, our church goes camping every year at Mount Mar, Mar Mountain and uh, Lake Tillery. They go camping and 
and they get out on the lake and fish and I'm not much of a fisherman but I got on the boat brother Eugene had borrowed a boat and there was brother Eugene Miss Hannah brother Mike Miss Sue and I got on there with them there are four life jackets on a boat with five people on it I chose I said I, I won't need it I can I, I'm a pretty strong swimmer I'm not worried about that well really didn't think we'd need it anyway we go all across Lake Tillery. I mean, we, we, I don't know how far down we were from the dock, but we were a long way down. I couldn't have swam that back. We come back and I'm dozing off. It's hot. It's in the middle of the summer and I'm, I'm, I'm hot and, and I'm dozing off sitting up in the chair. And, uh, all of a sudden I heard brother Eugene say, Hannah, What's that under your feet? And I look down and there's water coming in the boat. <laughs> we make it all the way across the lake to where we're, to where we're across dead straight in front of the dock. Now we're across the lake in front of the dock. We're on the shore and the boat is level, water high. We don't know what we're doing. Standing outside of the boat on the, on the edge of this soggy ground. And then there comes a big party boat. That big party boat, it comes and, and they say, well, we, we could take some of you across. And Brother Mike said, preacher, go across. I said, there ain't no way. <laughs> I said, you go, go across and, and call and get us some help. I said, ain't no way. <laughs> You, weren't, you couldn't have paid me to leave them so they could have said the preacher left us in our time of need. <laughs> For the first time and maybe the only time I was thinking on my feet. <laughs> but they, they had some buckets. They helped us get the water out of the boat. We, uh, the guy said, you could drive it across. Brother Eugene said, hold. This is a barred boat and I can't swim. Are you sure we can get it across? <laughs> the guy said, well, I can get it across. Brother Eugene said, go ahead. And there were, there were some ladies. Thank God for those ladies who were on uh, jet skis. And they took us across <laughs> on jet skis. And uh, Brother Mike had a, I think the lady that, that drove him across, her name was Sue as well. And so we, when we were, when we watched them go across with the boat, it got halfway and the, bo and the back end started going underwater. I think Brother Tony had to come by with his boat and throw a rope and pull it in. And when it got in, it was level with water. <laughs> so uh, we had an event. We were, it was a challenging day. Would you say that? It was a challenging day. Just like with this illustration, I, I don't want us to miss that we will face challenges in our life. As long as we live here on earth, we're going to be faced with challenges. In chapter 13, as we look in these verses today, we're going to find that the disciples, they were really challenged by our Lord Jesus Christ. And just for a thought, as we're looking in part two today, we're looking at the challenge before the cross. The Bible tells us in verses six and seven, it says, he, then he, came to Simon Peter and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will after this. This is God's holy word. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what our hearts have felt. We thank you, God, that, that we're able to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. And, and God, we just thank you that your presence is here today. God, we just thank you that you love us beyond what we could ever imagine. And if we didn't know you through your son, we couldn't even experience what we've already experienced. So now, God, we pray as we turn our attention to your word that you would just speak to our hearts. Hide me behind the cross and speak to your people. And God, we know that you're able to do all things. And we ask that you, through the power of your Holy Spirit, if there's one who doesn't know you through your son, Jesus Christ, let this be a day that they feel challenged to make a decision for you. And God, we'll give you praise for all that's accomplished. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 
as we think about this challenge before the cross, we have to remember what took place last week. Last week, we shared leading up to this passage that the disciples had been arguing over who would hold the leading positions in the kingdom that Jesus would be setting up. The discussion became heated because they they thought they were so caught up in their ambition for position and power and authority. Their pride and ambition was getting in the way of them of really understanding what Jesus had been sent to earth to do. So we notice in the text last week that Jesus was concerned for his disciples before going to the cross. And we know his motivation for his concern, it was pure because he was motivated by the fact that his hour had come. He was motivated by his love for them and he loved them to the end. And he was motivated because he knew that the devil was working and he was soon to strike. So Jesus used a method of displaying his concern that was precise. He knew their ambition and their pride um, would do them no good when Jesus would be betrayed, when he would be arrested, when he would be illegally tried, when he would be beaten and crucified. So he needed to teach them quickly that the glory he wanted for them would not come through position or power or even authority. It would come through service. So what we see in the text today is how Jesus demonstrates his, this, um, his service. How, the fact that he demonstrates this service, it presents a challenge to them. After Jesus and the disciples had their supper and Judas had left, the Bible tells us that Jesus rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, he took a towel, girded himself with the towel, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Then he wiped their feet with the towel that he had girded himself with. Now, it would help us to understand that in the hot, dusty roads on the countryside of Palestine, most people wore sandals and their feet became extremely dirty. So a water basin was in every home at the doorway. When you entered into a Jewish home, there would be a water basin right there next to the door. And for those who were poor, they washed their feet. But those who had money, those who were of substance, those who may have been rich even, they had a servant or they had a slave who would wash their feet when they walked through the door. And here, these disciples, they seem to be challenged. When Jesus looks at Peter, Peter says to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Now, there's an emphasis on those words. Uh, on each one of those words, Peter is saying, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Peter is really baffled by this. It seems he's taken aback. In chapter 10, we find that Jesus shares with them, that with his disciples, that he and his father are one. We find that Jesus pointedly even asked Peter at one point, who do you say I am? And Peter's response is, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter here, he believed Jesus to be the Christ. He believed him to be the promised Messiah. He was his Lord and, his, and he was savior of the world. So here Peter is challenged. Seeing that his savior, the very son of God, is humbling himself as a slave. He's humbling himself to wash their feet. So the Lord said to him, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will after this. It appears Jesus is saying, I know this is challenging for you, but trust me, there's a greater purpose. I know this is challenging for you, but trust me, one day it'll all make sense. I know this is challenging, but trust me, all will be worked out for your good and for God our Father's glory. They didn't understand what was taking place. Jesus knew. So the point is that on the way to the cross, 
there's a challenge for these disciples. And when we look at this passage, we find what that challenge truly is for the disciples. One, they were challenged with their conviction. Who really is this man? Here, after the Lord had the conversation with Peter, he went on to wash their feet. But once he finished, we find in verses 12 and 13 that he put his robe back on and he asked them, Do you know what I've done to you? It appears here that the disciples were, were still somewhat confused. So Jesus shares, you call me teacher and Lord, you say well for so I am. So it appears in that moment Jesus is challenging them to focus on what they actually believe about him. He's challenging their conviction over who he is to them. He, they called him teacher and Lord, but now he washes their feet and they're confused. So Jesus wants them to know that yes, their teacher who taught them the principles for living their faith in his steps on the Mount of Olives is in fact their Lord who they witnessed to, to do many miracles, none short of raising the dead. It was him who was washing their feet. The disciples did not understand what Jesus was doing right there in their lives. And it was challenging their conviction of who it is. You know, if we, when we think about this, we find as we continue to read and study the Bible, we find that though they were challenged in their conviction, ultimately we, they, their conviction never changed. We, we remember, we remember in the book of Acts, I think it's somewhere around chapter 3 and 4, we find the, the formation of the early church is taking place and Peter and John go up to the temple. And they, as they approach the temple, they notice the man begging who had been lame from birth, uh, sitting there at the gate called Beautiful. And as the man saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he was asking alms of them. In other words, he was begging for money from them. And, and Peter looked at the man and said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Peter had a conviction of who Jesus was at this time. And as the man stood to his feet, his ankles received strength. And he began to praise God. And when the people realized what had happened, they looked to Peter and John. And Peter declared, we have no power. We have no authority. There's not enough godliness in us to make this man walk, but it's through the power of Jesus Christ, the, the Holy One who you killed, who you crucified, who was raised from the dead. Peter continued at that point to challenge the people's conviction over who Jesus is. He challenged them to repent and to be converted. And by, because of Peter's preaching, Peter and John were arrested. And the next day, the religious leaders and the elders, they asked by what power did this lame man become healed? And Peter, being filled with the Holy Spirit, shared, By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, who God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. The religious leaders seeing that they had no leg to stand on. They instructed Peter and John to not spread this message among the people any longer. But Peter spoke and he spoke his conviction. I shared he was challenged when Jesus was washing his feet. But we see his conviction never truly changed. He said whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. In other words, Peter said, I'm going to preach what my teacher has taught me. I'm going to declare what I have seen my Lord do. Yes, Peter's conviction uh, who, in who Jesus was may have been challenged, but it never changed. So my question becomes to us. When we don't understand. What Jesus is doing in our lives. Are we. Is our conviction over who he is. Does it. Is it challenged. Or does it change. I mean if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have declared. That we believe he is the only. 
begotten son of God. But does our conviction change when we face a bend in the road? When we're faced with a disruptive moment, do we begin to doubt his love for us? When we see tragedy on the news, do we begin to question if he is still on his throne? When when it seems like evil behavior is being rewarded, do we question if he is even real? You know, when we find that our conviction of who Jesus is is being challenged, we can know that our enemy is at work. He is roaming like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And it would help us to remember that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we can remember Psalm 45 and 6 says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. We can remember that in Psalm 47 and 8, God reigns over the nations. He sits on his holy throne we can remember psalm 89 and 4 which says your seed i will establish forever and build up your throne to all we can know that that though we may be challenged from time to time in this life we don't have to change our conviction because he is who he says he is i'm found that we can remember Psalm 30 and 5 in troubled times. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. And if we believe God, if we believe in God, we can also believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. He, He and our Father are one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And we cannot let our conviction of who Jesus is be changed when we're faced with a challenge that we don't understand. Our lives are filled with challenges we don't understand. But we need to hold on to that conviction. (laughs) We need to hold on to that conviction. Hold on to our faith. Because the faith that we have is faith he's given us. So we we strengthen that faith. faith. We strengthen that faith by continuing to trust him. Even when we don't understand. Yes, there was a challenge to their conviction, but we also see the challenge of their conduct. I told you they were arguing over who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. But after this, and after their conviction of who he is is settled, Jesus challenges them again. Verses 14 and 15 He challenges them about their conduct. He says, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Boy, that's challenging. Is it not? I'm not letting you near my feet. (laughs) But it's challenging, isn't it? It's challenging to humble ourselves down. And to take care of someone. If Jesus is the disciples Lord and teacher. Then they are his servants. Right? The servant of Jesus must serve Jesus as their Lord and teacher. But if Jesus is soon to depart from them. How would they best serve him? They had to be asking that question. Now you're telling us that you are an example to serve you, but you're also telling us you're going to leave us. How do we serve you if you're going to leave us? We must serve Jesus by trusting what he says here they acknowledge him as their teacher but they also serve him best by following his example or obeying him we all know the song don't we trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey it seems this is what this is leading to if we're going to serve him we must trust him and obey him He is the Lord. And if they are to do what he says or what he does, then they're not going to serve themselves. Instead, they're going to serve others. 
Mark, 40, Mark 10 and 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. So the disciples here, they, their conduct as servants of God were being challenged. Queen Victoria, when she was a child, she didn't know that she was in line to be the Queen of England. Her instructors, they were trying to prepare her for her future. And they became frustrated because she wasn't motivated. And there was nothing they could do to motivate her. She just didn't, she didn't take her studies well. She, she was rambunctious. She'd done what she wanted to do when she wanted to do it. She just didn't take life serious. And finally, her teachers decided we've got to tell her that she's going to become the queen of England. And upon hearing this, that she would one day become the queen of England, Victoria quietly said, then I would be good. The realization that she had inherited this high calling of serving the people of England, it gave her a sense of responsibility that profoundly and affected her conduct from their own. <laughs> you know, as someone who has trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, someone who truly believes that he is the only begotten son of God, how are you challenged or how are we challenged to conduct ourselves as servants of Jesus Christ? It's a high and a holy calling to be a representative, a representative of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And becoming a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we have been set free from the penalty of sin. We know that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We know that if we make our petitions known to him, we can boldly come to his throne and we will obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Knowing this, how do we... How are we motivated or how are we challenged to conduct our lives? Can I suggest that we conduct ourselves by trusting our teacher? We do this by spending time in God's word. We must spend time reading, studying, and meditating on the word of God. The word of God must become a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And we must hide his words in our heart that we may not sin against him. But we don't just read, we don't just study and meditate on his word. We conduct ourselves by obeying God's word. This means we apply his word to our lives. It's not enough to be able to quote his word. We must apply it to our lives and live it out. When people see us, they see Christ. They see his word lived out in us. What they see, if they see his life lived out in us, they'll see a sacrificial love. The same sacrificial love he extended us, we will extend it to one another. We, we will follow his example and be willingly willing to give him everything that we have and all of who we are. We will show him and the world will see that we love him enough to trust him with our lives. But we don't just trust him with our lives. We must share him with the world. I think we, we probably do very good. I'd say many Christians do exceptionally well at just giving our lives to Christ. And trusting him even in the hard times of our lives. But how well do we conduct ourselves when it comes to sharing Christ with the world? Oh, the Jews, they done great. They done great living separated from the world. But that's all they done. They lived separated from the world. They followed the law, but they didn't share their God with others. And we're called to share Christ 
with the world. Some of us may never lead a mission team. Some of us may never teach a, a class. Some of us may never preach from a pulpit. But we can all have gospel conversations with someone who is seeking comfort. Someone who's seeking strength. Someone who's seeking peace, joy, and hope. We can share how Christ has challenged, has changed our lives. And how he will do the same for anyone else who will call upon the name of the Lord. So church family. Our conduct should exemplify that Jesus Christ is our teacher and he is our Lord. Whenever we're challenged by what the world throws at us, the world should see that Christ is our teacher and Christ is our Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe... There is someone here today who's not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Before he can be your teacher and Lord, he's got to be your Lord and your Savior. You've got to trust him with your life. And when you trust him with your life, then he'll pour himself into you and he'll teach you all things. And he'll take you into places you never imagined you could go. If you were to ask me, <laughs> if you were to ask me January of 2000, would I know you who are in here today? I'd have to say no. But God has taken me on a journey because I've allowed him to be Lord of my life. Do I fail my Lord? Yes, I do. Do I break his heart? There's been times my heart's just burst because I broke his heart. And it happens more than I'm proud of. But he's faithful to his word. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll love you to the end. If you'll trust him with your life. And he'll change your life. He'll give you hope and joy and peace. He'll give you comfort and love like you've never experienced. And he'll give you a family that you can call on when times get rough. That'll pray with you. That'll cry with you. That'll laugh with you. He'll give you a family that will rejoice in your highs. And weep in your lows. We can't judge you because we fall in the same place. We just love one another. Would you today, as they begin to sing this song of invitation, would you today consider your eternal life by accepting the challenge to believe in who Jesus is? And committing to conduct your life as a servant of his. Would you today? Would you today? Jesus is my high tower. A light in a dark hour. Without him.
He promised to hold my hand so I won't have to walk alone. He said he'd go with me always through good times and through dark days. He would be my friend and God. Oh, Jesus, he's the best. go with us to the end. We'll never find where he won't be faithful to his word. And we thank you today. We thank each one of you for being here. A uh, couple things before we go. One, um, I know, we know, we're, we're aware that the glare from this window can be distracting for some in the balcony, some in the back. Uh, it may have a hard time seeing. We are working on it. We just want you to know we are working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, we're trying to figure out what's the best way not to hide this beautiful picture, but at the same time dim the, the, uh, the shine of the sun. It does seem to be right there during service. So, so just be patient with us. We are working on it. Uh, also, this is the first Sunday of April. And uh, so that means... We celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. So, if you have a birthday in the month of April, we're going to invite you to stand, would you? There you go, Harper. <laughs> uh, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And if you have an anniversary in the month of April, would you please stand? Well, we invite. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you.
Brother Roger, you, you want to share how long you've been married? 58 years. 58 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not even 58. <laughs> they got a few more years. Um, also, we want to ask if you served in Vietnam, if you would stand. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Brother Eugene, help me one day this week. Would that have been Wednesday? Tuesday? Tuesday was recognized as Appreciation Day for those soldiers who served in Vietnam. And we want to take time to uh, appreciate you because that was a hard time in the life of our country. It was a challenging time for, for those who were married. Uh, some, like Brother Larry, had just gotten married and got a, with, and before his first anniversary. Four months Four months, got a letter that he was drafted into the military, and, and that meant he was going into Vietnam. Uh, so we, we do appreciate what you guys went through, and you're, you're welcome to share anything if you would like to. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, we. We appreciate you. We thank you for your service. And all our other veterans, we do thank you for your service as well. Um, we'll all stand if y'all would like. <laughs> uh, we what, do. What's your, what's your date? What's your time frame for the revival? Okay. Island Grove Baptist Church on Highway 710 between Pembroke and Red Springs. We'll be having a revival this week. They begin tonight at 6 o'clock. It begins tomorrow night through Friday at 7 o'clock. I'll be speaking Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, uh, Brother, Brother Kip will be teaching Bible study. He'll be in chapter 6. Yeah, chapter 6 of our a book, um, When Your World Falls Apart. Uh, so we want to encourage you to be here as many of you who will for that lesson it is a wonderful book i think the ones who've been here in the um, previous five weeks for that book have enjoyed it and we um uh, we uh pray that uh that you'll be much in prayer for us during this revival preacher kelvin locklear will be the other